Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a look at five hidden tricks within DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so obviously they're not hidden by definition, uh, but I think it's easier to say than these are five techniques that you can find somewhere within the menu system. But I think because Resolve has such a, an intuitive UI, more or less everything that you need is on the primary dashboard. Uh, these elements that we're going to discuss can often go amiss by new editors and veteran editors alike. Uh, so if I can get at least one thing that you didn't know that you could do in DaVinci Resolve today, uh, subscribe. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. I'm an advent user of the markers. I tend to use them a lot, especially when editing tutorials, and I need to mark a specific area for where I need to input graphics. However, let's say I delete a section of the soundtrack and voiceover, but I need the marker to remain in place as the video will not be shifted in the edit. And we can see that because the video track has auto select off. The problem is when I ripple delete this audio, the marker also moves back, but the video has stayed where it is right. So now my marker is telling me I need to add my animation to the wrong point in the edit. So to stop the marker moving backwards, we're gonna go up to the timeline menu and select ripple timeline markers. Now when we ripple delete something or perhaps ripple edits uh, the track so it moves forward, the marker stays where it is. Of course, you need to remember that this is turned off or turned on depending on how you look at the function. When you start making ripple edits that affect all tracks and you want that marker to move with it. There are numerous ways in which we can navigate the timeline. We of course have the on-screen buttons to zoom in and out with the respective keyboard shortcuts that go with them. If we use the scroll button on the mouse, we can move up the list of tracks. And if we hold control, it moves horizontally through the timeline and pressing alt will zoom in or out. However, did you know there is also a fourth scroll wheel function? And that's when you click and hold the scroll or middle mouse button if you don't have a scroll button. And that turns it into a grab hand tool. And this allows you to quickly move throughout the entire timeline, which is a lot faster than any other method I just stated. Additionally, depending on what area of the timeline you are on when you press the middle mouse button, it also allows you to scale up and down the tracks. Click it in the video area and you can move up and down the video tracks. Click it in the audio and you can move up and down the audio tracks. Of course, this only really works if you have multiple tracks within the, these different areas, but the method of moving horizontally is still much faster. While I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve editor, first and foremost, let's quickly jump over to the color page for a hidden tip that was updated not so long ago. So we know that when grading, you can press this button and it will loop the clip, which is great when you have a short clip and you wanna stop it from immediately proceeding to the next one. However, what if you wanna see how this graded clip looks in context to the next clip? And like a loop, you want it to revert back to the start position, or perhaps maybe you only want a certain area of a larger clip to loop. Well, open the timeline tab and like on the edit page, you can create an in and out point. Now, when pressing play, this area will become loopable. Okay, if you are a DaVinci Resolve veteran or an editing veteran in general, I'm going to assume this might be basic knowledge. If you're brand new to DaVinci Resolve or editing, you might think, oh, that's cool. Not too sure when I'll use it, but now I know. So suppose you are entering a film festival or perhaps you're giving a preview to someone and you don't want them to upload the film online and be naughty. So you might want to look at placing a watermark or a preview title across the entire film, or perhaps for review purposes, you want to add a time code to the file. Well, don't bother adding a title across the entire timeline because that's gonna be mucky and likely cause havoc. Instead, go up to the workspace menu and select data burning. This pop-up menu will appear and now we can add a variety of different data to the video clip from the source name of each file to custom text. And additionally, throughout the majority of these properties, the font elements can also be adjusted. Now this won't add any layers to your video tracks or anything of the sort. So therefore, when you're ready to get back to editing, all you need to do is just go back up to the burning menu and deselect what you have added. Okay, so we know that if we create a selection on the timeline by creating in and out points, I and O, we can then ripple delete, we just delete with a backspace the entirety of all clips within the selection that has auto select on. However, sometimes going through the rigmarole of setting in and out points can be two clicks too many if the selection that you want to delete all falls under one single clip. So here I want to ripple delete everything under this clip, the clip itself, the title, and the two tracks of sound effects. 
Well, instead of creating in and out points, we can just select that clip and hit Shift A, which will create a selection specifically to the length of the clip. And this is gonna save you messing around with that playhead. All right, and they are my five tips for today. I have been Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials and I'll catch you guys next time.